Jim. Nice to see you, Zach. Annabelle, now Joan. Appreciate the referral, Zach. More people from last year. Yes, sir. You've been avoiding me. Never. Everybody's been telling me how pretty I look thanks to you. Oh, I miss seeing you. I've never had a more cooperative patient. Thank you. Annabelle, you are a plastic surgeon's delight. Zach's been pressing me to set a date for the wedding. Well, everybody should be happily married. At least once. Hmm. Uh, this is some kind of great party. You know, they said it was going to be a big splash, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> How about saying thank you to your host, Dr. John Hill, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful, gifted, charming wife, Joan. And Joan's mind, Polly, and everybody's fine, uh, Rhea and Ash Robinson. Thanks so very much. You know, it's a great honor to MC the Chatsworth picnic here in Houston. There, there are more doctors here than in a soap opera. In a check room, I counted 400 stethoscopes. By the way, Don Rickles was originally going to come down here and vent his spleen, but he heard about the doctors being here, thought they would rip it out. <laughs> Houston is the medical capital of the world, and I know you're proud of that. You know, there are more hospitals here, more hospitals than movie theaters. And the biggest stars aren't Paul Newman and Gregory Peck, and Dr. Denton Cooley, Dr. DeBakey, and Dr. John Hill, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, uh, uh, Doctor, when the party's over, I could use a lift, and I'm not talking about a ride to the Houston Travel Lodge, either. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful parties in Galveston. You're thinking of somebody else, Woody. Oh, no, ma'am. I got a memory like an elephant. Mm -hmm. And a hide to match. Excuse me. Bill Destiny. Sworn true love. Yeah, she's faithful. Performs particularly well at tight range. Been in a lot of John's back lately. Take one with you tomorrow to pick up the boy. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Pa. For what? For being here. What do you think? An amateur job? I did it myself. Give yourself an appendectomy. Now in the oil field. 500 miles south of nowhere, not a doctor in the next five counties. I think he's all at some fancy party in Houston. Hey,
Ann. Ann Fairchild. Oh, hello, Steve. Oh, wait, it is Fairchild anymore. You got married. About 15 years ago. Where the hell I got to meet this lucky husband of yours. You'll have to go to East Texas. We're divorced. I really have to. Woody. Emergency over camp headquarters. They need an OB man. Emergency? Someone's having a baby here? Yep. You created the emergency. You can stand by and see a beautiful woman dying of boredom. Thank you. I enjoy playing St. George. Oh, what is a dragon? The deadliest variety. Instead of breathing fire, he spouts cliches. I'm grateful, George. John. Dr. John Hill. And Curry. See you later. Make a nice picture, would you mind? Go ahead. Let me fix you a drink. Thanks. Come sit down. Talk to me. Been sitting all day. My brother was infected by a vampire's bite. I'm going to make sure no one else has poisoned that again. Help me. That beaver's not going to rescue you tonight. I doubt there are any emergencies here. Need some fresh air. Your guest. I'd like to apologize. For what? For intruding on you and your boys. You must have thought it a little odd. <laughs> Dragon slayers are eccentric. It's just that I was so happy to see you after so many years. You're sounding like Woody. We've never met, but when I was interning at Herman Hospital, you used to work in a junior league clinic. <laughs> that was years ago. 1956 and 57. You were there on Wednesdays. You wore a powder blue coat with a small fur collar. Wednesdays were never the same after you stopped coming. We moved to East Texas. I have to go in. Good night. Good night. Good here. Miss 
tomorrow for me? Well, some tents up now. Trust me, don't you? Lately, you've been unhappy with yourself. I promise you, after today, you're going to like yourself much better. Just listen to the music. What are you doing? Entertaining myself. Where's your husband? On his rounds. Hmm. He's on his rounds. In that case, uh, you better come in. Huh. I look like a waiter didn't get his tip. <laughs> Dead man still walking around. Poor Julian. Yeah. Gone and soon forgotten. He didn't fit in the plan anymore. What plan? What plan are you talking about? John's master plan. He's got one, you know. He's reshaping the world till it suits him. His kid brother, being a switch hitter, was becoming an embarrassment to the successful plastic surgeon. So, Julian obligingly Took an overdose. John was very good to Julian. John manipulated Julian. Kid even died on cue. Pa! People are important to the doctor as long as he can use them to get what he wants. And honey, what he wants, he gets. This room. Look at it. He wanted it and he got it. How much money has he already sunk in this dry hole? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you one thing. That old country boy wouldn't have his music room, or this house, or any of it, if it wasn't for you. Pa, you want to look at some pictures of me and Belinda? Sure, honey. Sure. You want to? That's when it was good. Me and Belinda taking every trophy in sight. Very best. That's over. Oh, don't talk like that. I'll get you a new horse, as good as Belinda. 
better. Yeah. Well, this old girl's not getting any better. Don't ever say that. I won't stand for it. You're my girl. You don't give up. How many times do you think I felt like called it quits? Drilling for oil and getting sand. Big companies trying to squeeze me out. Banks chewing my butt. But they never beat me. Things go bad, they're bound to turn better. They will, I promise. If I ever promised you anything you didn't get. So this lady from Amarillo went to an interior decorator who redid her house. French provincial. Spanish Baroque. Then she went to a psychiatrist and he redid her mind. Early Freud. Just a touch of Jung. And I was supposed to rethink her face. Neo Loretta Young. Or Gertrude Stein. <laughs> <laughs> or Ian Wind Chimes. I beg your pardon. When you laugh, that's what I think of. Spring mornings, dew on the grass, and wind chimes. You're a most unpredictable man. Thank you. You take that as a compliment? After you've known most people for a very short time, don't you know exactly what they'll say, what they'll do? There aren't too many surprises. Lethal predictability. Death on marriages. Children are different. With the boys, I never know. Does the unpredictable male adult threaten you? No, but the unpredictable married male does give me pause. <laughs> it's late, and predictably, the sun will rise. Thank you. 
No, not like a wife, like a nag, like a shrew. I hate it. I wish I could hate it. No. Don't worry, I can't. I hate myself. Why? Because I'm not a good wife. It had to be you. I'd like to pick you up when you're finished. I have my car here. May I follow you home? My parents are coming for dinner. I'd like to meet them. Not tonight. What's your favorite flower? Oh, please, no flowers. I have a house filled with roses. From Jack Ramsey. How did you know that? I'll see you very soon. find it. Those roses are lovely, but too commonplace for you. It's beautiful. And unique. No two are ever exactly alike. Thank you. Pleiades and autumn. And I'm supposed to say, what does that mean? It has to do with the stars. For one cup of coffee, I'll explain. Ash, I'm glad to see you here today. I'm here every day, Henry. Only place left in Texas where a man's privacy is respected. Ought to rename it the New Alamo. Nothing here but hold out some diehards. Ash, I got a little problem. I can recommend the best urologist in Houston. Now, my problem's financial. Got a half million cash I have to invest before the first. I'm sure it was come by honestly. Now, you had some leases out on Wagnall Flats you wanted to unload? That was three years ago, Henry. Find someplace else for your half million. <sighs> Henry's living in the past, trying to buy oil leases out at Wagnall Flats for 1965 prices. How's Rhea? Oh, tolerable. And the girl? Jones fine. Well, I'm lying to you. She's not fine. Third marriage and it's not working out. But it's going to. I intend to see to it. Say, you hear about Charlie Tabor? Bought two million dollars worth of them French and Italian paintings. Man's colorblind. Great investment, he says. Great! Turns out they're fake. <laughs> Painted last year up in Tulsa. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie and his wife are moving up to Fort Worth, aren't they? Huh? Nobody up there will know the difference. <laughs> oh, good, good. Yo, come on, man. Get a little bit more. Come on, let's go, kid. You haven't lost your touch. You inspire me. I need you around here all the time. I'm going to put you on a payroll before somebody seals your way. I'm still not looking for anything steady, Jack. You sure? If I change my mind, I'll tell you. Right. Did the doctor cut me out? No. We've been seeing it. <laughs> Everywhere I turn. Maybe you and I should take a little intermission, Jack. Sick. I thought he was rope tied and branded. He's talking divorce. That kind of talk is easy. I'm free now. Don't crowd, Jack. Okay. Okay, but be careful. I mean, you hear some weird stories about Hill. Oh, in Houston, you hear weird stories about everybody.
What do you think, Doc? Well, we can restore the line of the nose, change the eyes, modify the jawline. So when you're all done, I'm going to look like Cary Grant, huh? Or maybe like you. Uh, my own image? Hey, I wouldn't mind. The bone structure's too dissimilar. Hey, Doc, anything you do with my face, it's going to be an improvement. Anyway, you're the guy that fixes God's mistakes, no? You should run an advertising company. Yeah, you know, I was telling my old man the other day what you were going to do. He said, why? Well, maybe he likes you as you are. Now, what he meant was you make big bucks up in Houston. What do you want to waste your time with me for? This isn't a waste of time, because really, I can try new techniques here that I can't with my regular patients. It's me a chance to learn. Maybe help somebody at the same time. I'll be back next week. We'll start with the nose. I'll be here. You can count on that, Doc. I doing? Why am I going off to a horse show when things are the way they are between John and me? He does as he damn well pleases. I expect you're doing likewise. Yeah, I guess I You know, I'm not happy anymore unless I'm in a ring on a good horse. So do it. When I'm not in the ring, when I'm not riding, I, I get so lonely. I'm coming with you. Yeah. I said I'm coming with you.
we were going on a picnic. Yes. nice being here with you. I need you to know me, Anne, in a way nobody else ever has. Let's not go back to Houston tonight. Let's just get in the car and head west. John. Maybe we'll end up in San Antonio or El Paso. Maybe Shangri-La. What about your patient? You fix that. You fix that. Please, let me have this weekend with you.
tells me I can have a full-time job playing the tuba. <laughs> but he's going to have to pay me a knockburst and sauerkraut. <laughs> well, I think that's perfect. You do, huh? your dearest maids and sing a Rosalie, but the yellow rose of Texas beat the bells of Tennessee. Yes, the rose of yellow rose of Texas beat the bells of Tennessee. And once more, the yellow rose of Texas beat the bells of Tennessee. <laughs> Don't give a damn if the doctor is in consultation. You tell him Ash Robinson wants to talk to him now. That's right, immediately. Excuse me. I told him to hold my calls. Story of my life. Yes. John Ash Robinson. I want to see you at my house tonight at 8 o'clock. Sorry, I can't make it. I'm not giving you an option. You be there, or you'll lose everything. I promise you'll never see Boot again. Is Boot sick? Just be at my house, 8 o'clock tonight. Please forgive the interruption. Doctor, I was thinking, maybe I need a little while longer, you know, to prepare myself. Hey, dear. It's going to be so simple. And you're going to feel about yourself the way you did when you were the assailant. Get on to it. Let me start by saying this is my last command performance here. Is that right? From now on, when you crack that whip, I don't jump through the hoop. I hear you found a new trainer. I've just taken control of my own life. I'm making the decisions now. For me, for Joan. And you decided on a divorce. That's right. Shouldn't you have talked it over with Joan? It's her marriage, too. She knows this is best. It's been nothing between us for too long. What about Boot? You'll be better off in the long run. As simple as that. You got all you want out of Joan and out of me, and now it's time to move on. Ash, I wish I could make Joan happy. For ten years now I've tried. Now it seems like the fair thing to do is step aside and let her find someone else. Very generous, Doctor. Of course, for consolation, you have Ann Kurth, the big house down the drive, the million-dollar music room. We'll work out a fair settlement. I worked it out. <laughs> 
This is between me and Joan. We're talking money, doctor. My money. The money that changed you from a greenhorn country boy to a big city know-it-all. The money that put you in that big house and started the music group. I'll repay whatever. You separate from my daughter, and you'll deed all interest in that house to Joan. You'll agree in writing to make all payments until it's clear. You'll take out an insurance policy to pay for it in case you should die suddenly. That house never meant anything to Joan. It does now. The party's over, Doctor. You've had your fun. Out the stud at 40. A lot of men try that at your age. Joan understands. Now tonight, you go home. Be a good husband, good father. We dropped both these divorce actions. What do you mean, both? Jones counter suing. Unless you do as I say, exactly as I say, there's going to be one hell of a court fight, and your new lady love and her children are going to be right in the middle of it. Don't drag Ann into this, Ash. She's already been served a summons. Now, you fight us, Doctor. When it's over, you're not going to have Ann Kurt. You're not going to have the big house. You're not going to have the music room. And you'll be finished in Houston. And Joan wants me back. On these terms. She's waiting for you at your house. Touched your champagne. Me. John, look at me. I don't blame you. Things haven't been good in a long time. A lot of it's been my fault. But let's don't waste any more time hurting each other, okay? Happy. Come on. Okay? I'm here. Yeah. But you're not smiling. One step at a time. I'm gonna make you smile. Okay? I'm gonna cut down on the horse shows. I'm gonna stop smoking cigarettes. I'm gonna learn a lot more about your music. <laughs> calling. He has this crazy piano, you know, has a real funny name. Busendorfer. That's it, a Busendorfer. Best in the world. A Stradivarius of pianos. Yeah. I'm looking for one for the music room. Well, I just happen to have his number. John. Why can't we talk on the phone? Why can't you come over to the house? 
I don't want any hurt to come to you or the boys because of me. What are you talking about? I'm talking about Ash Robinson. He's threatened us? He's hell-bent to keep me and Joan together. Anyone who gets in his way gets run over. For now, it just seems smart to go along. This doesn't change anything between you and me. Except that we can't be together. There's nothing between Joan and me. Nothing. She knows that. I can bring her around. Can you wait? I love you. Jeremy. Please don't do that to him. I beg your pardon? Don't jerk and pull, little boy, on the end of a chain like an animal. Mister, how I control my kid is my business. You think he won't remember you did this to him? He will. For the rest of his life, you'll be pulling against that chain. Take it off of him. John. See a stranger. I developed a new technique for treating the hooded eyes. You did make me look a little like you. Yeah, yeah Dr. Caselli. Dr. Caselli, sure. I'd be more like that doctor in the movies. He's real handsome and respectable and all. But then he knocks back his potion and he's rotten all the way. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. One of my favorite stories. Who'd ever guess Hyde was in here? We all have two sides. If I can ever do anything for you. Next time you're on parole, give yourself a break. Did you ever go the other way, Doc? Take a good looking guy and make him ugly? Not yet. Ho, ho, ho! John, we were having lunch here. He's going to try to stop by. Then it's still on with you two? 
me yes no oh mary i don't know what to think i saw jen's picture in the post the other day he and joan in a party he looked miserable i know the feeling he wants to marry you if joan will be reasonable excuse me this is kind of easier for you Seeing you. Thank you. Uh, Jack, you know my cousin Mary? Hi. Hello. How are you? How are you doing? Oh, getting by. Thanks again. Yeah. Well, that cutting horse needs some work, and uh, I need some inspiration. I'll call you. She invited me. Of course. You left the light on in the bathroom. No. Raising your own penicillin? Trying to find the source of an epidermal rash. Third night this week. Dr. Hill, this is Hill. 
This is Hill. Right over here, please. You haven't changed. Nothing's changed. Nothing's gonna change. Why are you looking at me that way? I'm worried about you. You seem so keyed up. Is there something you're not telling me? Maybe you're the one that's hiding something, feeling guilty. What do I have to feel guilty about? Have you been seeing Jack Ramsey? No, I haven't. But if I had, I wouldn't feel guilty. You're using him to pressure me into doing something about Joan. Pressure you? I've never pressured you. Six months, seven. When have I put any pressure on you? Well, you don't do it, obviously, but you have your ways. I feel it. You're doing this to yourself, and I don't want to stay here and watch it. that damn thing in my sleep. Come on! Whenever I'm happy, close to having a good time, I hear beep, beep, beep. I can't stand it. John Hill? Emergency. Child chewed by a dog. Sorry. Alone. 
I need some company. Well, maybe we should go downstairs. What? Play in that shabby den downstairs when we have Houston's new Versailles? Anyway, I wouldn't be close to my husband. That isn't what he prefers, but that's time. Joan, he's hearing you. I don't care. I want him to. I pass. Three new company? You know my husband still has his own apartment? Joan, please. Spends more time there with his girlfriend than he does with me. Oh, but you two know that, of course. This is embarrassing. Please lower your voice. You might think I'm telling secrets. You see, nobody in this family is allowed to have secrets except John. You know what my husband is? I'm not saying. All right. I was getting back into town on Monday, and I'm going to my attorney. I'm tired of always, always being the dummy. Why did you change the record? This is your favorite. Why don't you two dance? Yeah, I make up for what I didn't do last night at the party. Let me speak to Joan. Ash, this is Gina. Joan's a little under the weather this morning. What's wrong? John says the flu. You're supposed to meet me at the airport. I'll take a taxi. Just the flu? That's John. I'll see you later. John help you? He gave me a shot. I just feel like upsing all the time. Could it have been anything you ate? Well, we pretty much had the same thing. I don't know. It's so strange. I feel sick, but I feel so much better about things between me and John. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah, he was so sweet last night. I think everything's going to be all right. I'm going to be sick. you late for school. Ash, you'd be a good idea for Boot to stay with you and Rhea until Joan's feeling better. Right. Hello? I'd 
love you. I love you. We pressed. There's no way I can see you today. I miss you. Plan a recital tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock at Crockett Elementary School. I'll see you there. We're not going to have that. Am I going to die? We're not going to let you die. We're going to pray. Can you pray? Oh, sweet Jesus, have mercy on this sick and suffering woman. Oh, ease her pain and cool her brow. Why don't you take your pills? I can't. Will you go to the hospital? Dr. Hill, please. Dr. Hill's in surgery. Well, you got to get him right away because he's got to come home right now. Mrs. Hill, she, she's gotten worse. Thank you. 
carry her. It's better for her to walk if she can. Joan, shouldn't you call Doctor? She's in good hands. Now, Mom, listen. But, uh, listen. Don't upset her. Or yourself. I have to go to surgery. I'll check back here as soon as I can. into my healthy girl. I'll get you well and out of here. They're treating you good? Yeah. Any doctor you need, we'll round him up. That's one thing Houston's got. More MDs than flies. <laughs> I wish you had a better room. You watch. I'll fill this place with flowers. moving Joan to the medical center. It'd be very dangerous. Why did you bring her here? Because it's a fine hospital and I can be close to her. This is close? Everything they could possibly do at the medical center we're doing right here. Tomorrow, if her condition hasn't stabilized, we can talk about moving her. She's never been this sick before. Ash, her blood pressure's rising. She'll be better by morning.
smiled at me. It was just a few hours ago. It was renal failure. Kidneys stopped functioning. You told me she was going to be all right. Uh, I knew she needed help. I wanted to move her, but you told me she was getting better. I thought she was.
Good morning. I'm the pathologist from Sharpstown Hospital. I'm here to perform an autopsy on Mrs. John Hill. Autopsy? She died this morning after being in the hospital less than 24 hours. Law says you have to do an autopsy. I'm sorry, doctor. The body's already been involved. But that shouldn't have been. Who ordered it? Dr. Hill. I see. Master? Uh, that's me. Please. Have a seat, Mr. Robbins. I came down here to see the district attorney. Yes, sir, and you were referring to me as assistant. Please. All right. My only child died Wednesday morning. Funerals today. Yes, sir, I know. I'm very sorry. I want an immediate investigation into her death, and don't tune me out as a crazy old man. You hear what I've got to say. Less than a week ago, my daughter was in perfect condition. She was suddenly taken ill after eating French pastries practically and fed to her by her husband. He's a doctor, plastic surgeon. I know, Dr. Hill. I've got witnesses to this pastry hocus pocus. Starting Saturday night or Sunday morning, Joan began vomiting, had diarrhea, fever. Her husband did not call in another doctor, tried to keep everybody else out of her room. Tuesday, when he was forced to take her to the hospital, he chose Sharpstown, where there's no intensive care unit. She was treated by doctors who have never seen her professionally. Fifteen hours after she was admitted, Joan was dead. They rushed her from the hospital to the embalming table before an autopsy could be performed. Violation of state law. I'll get into that with the coroner. The so-called autopsy after the embalming said she died of pancreatitis. I've talked to a dozen of the best doctors in Houston, and they all say it's highly unlikely my daughter died of pancreatitis. I want this office to do something about it. Yes, sir. I'll get right on it and get back to you next week. No, sir. That's not good enough. I want the coroner out to that funeral home today, before they close that coffin. Gina, wait a minute. Sorry I disturbed you. Look, Robert's been so upset, we're just trying to cheer him up. Why did Joan die? The autopsy report she developed pancreatitis. And you're a doctor. You knew how sick she was. Why didn't you help her? Did help. She should have been in a hospital before Tuesday. Joke about hospitals. She didn't want to go. And then on Tuesday, I said I was taking her anyway. I had to literally pick her up and carry her down these stairs. Pancreatitis. Seems impossible. A week ago, we were with her. And she was looking so great. You feel you should take sides. John's bearing up well. It's as she's taking it hard. That old man is going to make some big trouble. He's been all over town. Hospitals, doctor's offices, newspapers, questions, questions, questions. But the autopsy reports say natural causes. <gasps> Look who just came in. Joe. Now, why would he come here? John's a doctor. It's a courtesy thing. I'll bet you a steak dinner, Joe Yahemshek isn't here as a friend of the family. I bet he's here officially as county coroner.
Get away from us. Get away! I need to clear my conscience. Praise the Lord. Please let me confess. And free myself of this burden of guilt. Amen. And find peace. Amen. My wife is dead. A fine woman. Now when it's too late for me to make amends to her. I know I wasn't a good husband. I've lived only for myself. Money, recognition, success, they came first. I had no time for those that loved me, depended upon me, needed me. I can't ask my wife's forgiveness. It's too late. But I'm begging God's forgiveness. Amen. Your forgiveness. I promise to work to change my ways with God's help. And the support of my brothers and sisters in Christ. When you told me about it, I couldn't picture it. Nothing like this. You really like it? Because it suits you. It is you. Any other man I know would seem ridiculous in a room like this. The overwhelmed guy. Not you. So do you. I've seen you in so many different places. Doing so many different things. But here in this room, there's someone entirely new. The woman I've always wanted. Change things. Make, make the world my world. It should be. I didn't know that's true. What's natural causes, Mr. Robertson. You know Hill's taken out a marriage license. Yes, sir, but I've been researching hepatitis. Now, you can give it to a person with an injection. But it doesn't kill that quickly. It takes months, years. What about the paste? No, sir. The coroner ruled out poisoning based on the studies of the embalmed tissue. That autopsy doesn't mean a thing handled the way it was. Now, let's consider the alternatives. The way I see it, we have too many questions and not enough answers. The district attorney's office is prepared to convene the grand jury to investigate alleged irregularities in the death of Joan Robinson Hill. Do you, Anne, take this man, John, to love and to cherish, to honor and obey for as long as you both shall live? I do. The rings, please. I now pronounce you man and wife.
What the hell? It's damn good and you know it. Yeah, there must be something wrong with it or you wouldn't want to sell it. You got a suspicious turn of mind. Well, after 40 years with you, what's eating on you, Ash? Out of priorities. I don't have time to fool with this now. Ash! Can't you let it be? Killed her. Thinks he got clean away with it. I mean to nail. You can finish this later. I want you guys moved in before dark. Get those boxers, take them upstairs. Boot. You gonna give us a hand? I don't really think I'm ready for this. Damn. This is our home. Yours, mine, and the boys. We were doing fine at my place. Too small. And too far from the medical center. We could find another house. Nothing to compare with this. I think I'm being foolish. I think you're tired. We'll build a new house someday. I promise. But for now, this is home. Inside. It's I see it is. Inside, please. What is it? It's Ash. He parks out there by the hour. He's been following the boys to school every morning. Dr. Robert? I don't know. I wish you'd help me see to it that he doesn't. Robert's so fond of him. Robert is a confused little boy. I don't want Ash Robinson filling his mind with lies. these things of Jones. I, I didn't know what to do with them. You're upset. I'm feeling like an intruder. And you belong here with me and with the boys. Our boys. I better say goodnight. being with the brothers. I hope they like it here. They do. Good night, Robin. Sweet dreams. Tuesday, she's in the hospital. Dying. You boys ever seen anything like that? 
You ever studied about anything like that? How does a doctor kill a healthy woman in three days? concentrate on my music. I can't relax with you. That damned old man. You mustn't let him do this to you. He's determined to ruin me. Asking questions at every hospital in town. Telling lies to anyone who listen. He's written a letter to the County Medical Society saying I should no longer be allowed to practice in Houston. They didn't take him seriously. I'm not getting as many referrals. And he's doing his damnedest to influence the grand jury. If he could find a way, he'd pay them to indict me. Have you tried to talk to him? He won't listen to reason. I thought about volunteering to appear before the jury, but there's no guarantee they'll believe me. Just give it a little time. You'd have to accept what I said if I took a lie detector test. Not the machine, but sodium pentothal, the truth serum. And not in the courthouse, but in a hospital. The district attorney could ask me any questions he liked. Maybe we could tape it. If you think it would help. Oh, baby, I want to slam the door on all this gossip. I've got to be finished with the past so you and I can plan for what's ahead. Enjoy what we have now. Robert seems to fit right in. Oh, the brothers love him. And you should see John with them. Oh, I wish we knew John better. He was so sorry he couldn't be here today. We could have a family barbecue. And Papa and I, we hear these stories. About John. About Joan's death. Ash Robinson is working overtime bad-mouthing John. I know truth, is it? When you care for anybody, you've always been so loyal. Come what may. It wasn't a happy marriage. Joan died so suddenly. I know we didn't help matters by marrying so soon. Yes, it doesn't matter if you're happy. Mama, I'm in love for the first time in my life. I love John, and I hope I am loyal to him, and always will be. It isn't only John. It's Robert. It's the brothers, the whole family we have. Someday we're hoping there might be a little girl. I never thought I could be so happy. Okay. Hey, Papa, look. I don't hold my nose anymore. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd gone to the hospital to take that lie test. I'll be there in 15 minutes. I felt like I was catching a bug, so I thought I'd give myself a shot to knock it out. Well, let me call and postpone the test. No, Anne. I know sodium pentothal is an anesthetic, and you shouldn't take it if you're not feeling well. Honey, everything's going to be all right. I.D. McMaster's district attorney's office. Did you give your wife a shot? Yes, sir, I gave her two shots. And what were these two shots you administered, Dr. Hill? They were prochlorpyrazine. That's a drug to relieve vomiting. And where did you administer these two shots? In the arm, intravenously. How do you remember so much of it? 
knows. Could that flu shot you gave yourself have anything to do with it? body exhumed. Mr. Robbins. I want the body exhumed and another autopsy performed. Exhumation is a very painful and unpleasant experience. For the bereaved. Who's grieving except me and my wife? Not the widower. I'm trying to influence this office with the Reeves sodium pentothal test. We were not influenced. Rhea and me are willing to suffer through this exhumation. Nobody else has any right to say no. Of course, legally the husband has a right. Do you know who Dr. Milton Helpburn is? Of course, I've heard the name. He's the leading pathologist in the country, in the world. Chief medical examiner in New York City. I've talked with him. He's willing to come down here and perform another autopsy. He needs somebody in authority to ask him. You're talking about a very expensive procedure. I'll pay for it, pay for everything. I've already worked it out with Helpburn. All I'm asking is an authorization. My daughter's dead. Nobody agrees on what killed her. Pancreatitis, hepatitis. Before I go to my grave, I have to know. I won't quit till I do. All right, Mr. Robbins. We'll leave it up to the grand jury. If the boys find out we came down here without them, I can keep the secret. Can you? Oh, I love being with the boys. But I haven't had enough time alone with you. Lately, you only been together. You, you seem so far away. Baby. Please. Don't ever let anything come between us. Mr. Helper, and I just got word the grand jury gave us the go-ahead. They'll be in touch with you in a couple of days. Very well. We'll set up a suitable schedule. The sooner the better. Uh, Mr. Robinson, I'm very happy to do what I can, but I want to remind you again that you mustn't count on this too heavily. The odds against our discovering anything new are very high. Just come do your best. That's all I ask. I'll talk to you soon. Right. We're doing it, Ma. We're finally on the move against that monster. I think you're wrong. 
What are you talking about? This thing you're doing. It's not going to bring Joan back now, is it? And if you keep on, John will never let Boot be with us. When I prove what I'm going to prove, we'll take Boot away from him forever. I miss that little boy. You think I don't? Listen, John Hill's going to meet his match. That other doctor back east killed his wife with this hard-to-detect poison. Figured he had gotten clean away with it. Along comes this man, Helper. Fat, he's got it. Did it once, he can do it again. Please, give us a statement. Mr. did you comment on the verdict? You were pleased, of course. My two favorite words in any language. Not guilty. This evidence seems so overwhelmingly against your client. I like challenges. When the DA destroyed your initial defense, you seem to have half a dozen alternate positions. Well, let's look at it this way. Say you sue me because you say that my dog bit you. Well, now, this is my defense. My dog doesn't bite. And secondly, in the alternative, my dog was tied up that night. And third, I don't believe that you really got bit. And fourth, I don't have a dog. <laughs> Haynes interviews. John Hill, Mr. Haynes. Good morning, Dr. Hill. I have an idea about this new autopsy. take you to an emergency room. Just get the bandage on. If your collarbone is fractured, it has to be set. Bandage holding it in place, it'll heal. Remember when I broke my shoulder? They put me out. I didn't feel a thing. I had sodium pentothal. Is that right? Mom said I never stopped talking while I was out. Funnier than Tommy Smothers. Well, everything's under control here now. You check on the other boys. Why are you afraid to go under an anesthetic? I'm not afraid. Surgery is for other people. And so are motorbikes. Dr. Hill? Dr. John Hill? Please report to surgery. Dr. Hill? Dr. John Hill, please report to surgery.
looking at me. There's no music.
no sitter with the boys. They don't need a sitter. This is pleasant. Just you and me. Why are you pushing yourself like this? Let's go back. All right.
John. God, why? No! No! John! I beg you, don't do this! No! John! John! Look at me! It's me! It's Anne! It's Anne! Please don't! Please! Please! Don't do this! Don't do this, John! Look at me! Look at me! It's Anne! out of here. Anybody still in there? No, it's just the two of us. Don't be seriously hurt. Would you be kind enough to take us to a hospital? What about your car? I'll report the accident from the hospital. I can't believe it happened. I can't. Wanting to give Mrs. Hill a shot? No. Oh, thank you. Would you be kind enough to call us a taxi? Right away.
sleep just yet. I get surgery in a few hours. Try to sleep if you can.
morning, Ann. I love you. get the job done. Dr. Helpburn, are you put off by the fact that there'll be a dozen other doctors assisting? Dr. Helpburn's in charge. He's performing the autopsy. The rest are spectators. That's all. Mr. Robinson, isn't it true that approximately half those spectators are a medical team representing John Hill? What do you mean, team? This isn't a football game. Dr. Hill has no say in this whatsoever. Do you see any similarities between this and any of your other cases? I try to come to each new assignment with a fresh perspective. Mr. Robinson, are you the man paying for this second autopsy? That's right. And I'll keep on paying as long as it takes to get the truth out in the open. Thank you for coming to me. I didn't think you wanted me to come to you. Are you feeling differently? I don't know what I feel. Feel you love me. When I'm here, with you like this, I love you. It's as though, as though it never happened. I need you. I knew what you said about Joan wasn't true. This autopsy, even though Ash is paying for it, if they find she died of natural causes. That's exactly what they'll find. Believe me. Dr. Milton Helpern, Chief Medical Examiner for the City of New York. Gentlemen, good morning. Let's get started, shall we? Is this a lawful casket of Joan Robinson Hill? Yes, sir. By order of the Harris County District Attorney, open this coffin. Dr. Halpern's found indications of an earlier exhumation. Yes, Doctor, shortly after interment. By whose order? A uh, permit from the city health department. Representative... Who obtained the permit? Uh, Dr. Hill. John Hill opened this casket? That is correct. I believe it was to remove a ring from the lady's finger.
This is the body of an adult white woman appearing to be 35 to 40 years of age. detached, showing evidence of sectioning during the prior autopsy. There is considerable evidence of aging in the aorta. The heart, the heart is missing, gentlemen. seems that the brain is missing too. Dr. Himchek, I performed the first autopsy on Mrs. Hill. It had to be done at the funeral home, remember? Mm -hmm. So I took the heart back to my lab for closer study. And the brain? The same. I kept that specimen. Shall I get it for Dr. Halpern? Please do. This is the brain of Joan Robinson Hill? Yes, sir. And when you examine it, I think you'll find a probable cause of death. Really? Meningitis. Well, we shall see. Gentlemen, let us turn our attention to the spinal cord and its meninges. It would not be appropriate for me to comment at this time. Dr. Helpburn conducted the investigation in a thorough and painstaking manner. When he submitted his report, the public will be advised. Thank you. Joan Robinson Hill died suddenly after a brief illness, raising a cloud of suspicion. Dr. Milton Halpern, famous chief coroner of New York City, came to Houston by special request to take charge of this autopsy, the cost of which was underwritten by Ash Robinson. It is hoped that this second examination will answer once and for all the questions raised concerning the cause or causes of Joan Robinson Hill's untimely death. Joan Robinson Hill was an internationally acclaimed horsewoman You've been working in there all day. You must have come up with something. On the surface, there is nothing to indicate that your daughter's death resulted from anything but natural causes. You found nothing? On the surface, Mr. Robinson. My job is, hasn't even begun. I go to work when I get back to my laboratory, to my microscope. Then we'll see. When will we hear from you? Well, it can't be rushed. Take all the time you need. Let's do it right this time. Did you know that this was not the first exhumation? What do you mean? Well, we learned yesterday that Dr. Hill had the casket open shortly after the funeral. Why? Ostensibly to recover her ring. Oh, it is such a gorgeous morning. Let's go out and enjoy it. Could we talk a minute? Oh, uh, I see a dark cloud. That is behind us. Why don't I call Tom and get him to take over my round? Please. Joan had a transfusion 45 minutes before she died. If they gave her the wrong kind of blood... I'm pile in the car and go down to the bay. John, why won't you help me? Whatever happened to Joan... Is dead and buried! But a few people are so obsessed they keep digging it up. Those people are sick. Deranged. I want Joan Robinson out of my life. And whatever it takes to get rid of her, I'll do it. These are hers. This.
definition in exorcism. The breed of a man possessed. Who'd like the honor of lighting the pyre? Anne? Boot? No! I missed you, boy. I missed you so much. What did you hear? She brought you? And Kurt? Who'd have thought it? Oh, well, thing is, you're here. Skinnier than ever. Come to see you to thank you. Mr. Robinson. What you did yesterday for Boot and for us was a very kind thing. I've never liked the idea of keeping a little boy away from people who love him. You'll let him come again? Whenever we can arrange it. Without John knowing. I guess things aren't too good between you and him. Not very long ago, seeing you look the way you do now would have made me as happy as a tick on a champion hound. Now it worries me. I'll try to bring Robert by this afternoon. We'll be waiting. I used to stop by here nearly every morning, have coffee with my girl. don't you? So do I. I'll be home in the morning. you were at the hospital. I finished early to be with you. I knew you'd be home alone tonight. I 
wasn't safe. They warned people about swimming alone. Sudden cramp. I'm a very good swimmer. Everyone knows that. And I don't take foolish risks. Oh, but you do, Anne. Lately, you've been taking some very foolish chances. What do you mean? You've been talking to the wrong people. Mm -hmm. We were alone in a pool that first night we'd met. Beginnings. Mm -hmm. Endings. John. You must have let him out when you came in. Mm -hmm. Killer. He's done this before. How many times? The owner's a friend. She'll be very upset. But she doesn't do anything. And he'll kill again. You know he will. I'm sorry. We'll have to get the boys another dog. I'm sorry. felt for anyone what I feel for you. And I'm losing you. John, I'm trying. Complete ease in autumn. Your lovely eyes. Oh, they're up there. We just can't see them. Go in. I'll take care of this. It is my opinion Joan Robinson Hill came to her death as a result of a fulminating infectious process, the specific nature of which is no longer determinable. The immediate embalming and initial autopsy in an environment not equipped to perform adequate bacteriologic, virologic, and toxicologic studies precluded the proper pathological determination of the exact cause of death. It is my further opinion that the exact cause or manner of death cannot be established from the exhumed body and autopsy alone. In view of the unusual circumstances surrounding this death, and the questions raised following the death, a thorough grand jury investigation is indicated and herewith recommended. into your life without flowers? Ah. Uh, you, know, you look sort of pale. Is he being good to you? He better be.
boys to a double feature, and with the weather being what it is, we just thought we'd keep him here tonight. You're sure? It'll give you and John some time to yourself. I'll talk to you in the morning. Bye-bye. Just this minute walked into the house. That's a lie, liar. I didn't imagine it. It was Joan's voice and her picture in Robert's room. to sign here and here. Well, why don't you have dinner with me tonight? 
Mr. Ramsey, we're admitting you as a patient. Yeah, I know, but I'm going to have a private room, and we can start off with a bay shrimp. We get the rack of lamb, and then we go for the old Grand Marnier souffle. Orderly. Yeah. Room number 493. Oh, let's check for an insurance exam. Yeah, I'm not contagious. I'm just kind of congenial. Jack Ramsey? What about Jack? He checked into the hospital yesterday for an insurance exam and died this morning. No. Oh, Papa. Papa. Uh, honey, I'm sorry. That was clumsy of me. Poor Jack. Are you all right? Now, don't forget, we're counting on all of you for dinner tomorrow. Thanks, Papa. With the court's permission, I'd like to ask my client a few questions which I feel may be helpful. Thank you. Uh, Anne, how long have you been married to Dr. Hill? Five months. Five months. Some people might object to the fact that only five months is not near enough time to test a relationship. We can't live together. Has Dr. Hill ever been unfaithful? Not to my knowledge. But the relationship is incompatible. Yes, it is. You afraid of your husband? We can't live together. Well, in his complaint, Dr. Hill alleges that you injured him, both verbally and physically. Does it matter? Yes, it matters. You're accused of being interested only in Dr. Hill's money, of embarrassing him in front of his colleagues, of having a very cruel and unforgiving temper. That isn't true. I tried to understand, forgive. And why can't you forgive? And why are you terrified of him? Because he tried to kill me. publicly declared that your ex-husband made an attempt on your life. Is that true? Yes. As a result of that declaration, you were subpoenaed before the Harris County Grand Jury where you testified that uh, John Hill had actually made two attempts. I did. Mm -hmm. These attempts uh, took place on June 29th, 1969. Why did you wait so long to, uh, to accuse the doctor? I was afraid. Oh. Well, the night of the accident, uh, weren't the police summoned? 
Yes. If you'd told them your husband had tried to kill you, they would have given you protection. There were four children at home. I was trying to do what was best for all of us. <laughs> the, the initial shock and confusion, now that I can understand, but to, to live for months with a confessed murderer who tried to kill you. I love him. Even after he tried twice to take your life? I loved him. I wanted to believe it wasn't true. Mrs. Kurth is still being intimidated by Dr. Hill. No. In what way? Well, he follows her. He phones her up at all hours. He watches her house. Perhaps he's trying to frighten you so you won't testify when he comes to trial. If he ever comes to trial. Now, we are, we are confident the grand jury is going to indict. So please stay in touch. Bye, Eddie. Bye, Frank. Thank you. Well, I don't know. I just don't know. Dr. Hill in for booking on the murder charge? Dr. Hill will present himself to the sheriff's office on Monday for process. Could you tell us the doctor's reaction to being charged with murder by omission? Well, his reaction was exactly the same as mine. Shock and disbelief. Now, as we understand it, the doctor is indicted not for what he did, but for what he didn't do. Well, if you understand it, please explain it to me. The charge reads the doctor killed Mrs. Hill by failing to give her proper medical treatment and by failing to take her to a hospital in time. Any comment? Yes, yes. Well, I don't see any way that a conviction can be obtained. As a matter of fact, I feel that the grand jury has done us a great favor. We are looking forward to a speedy trial and absolute vindication. Richard, we have a meeting. you mean you won't do that? Well, I thought she was past to tell you the truth. She said, Wilma, am I going to die? And I said, let's pray. And I prayed with her. I had prayer with her and I told her to pray to God that he wouldn't let her die because God hears you. Then I put her in the car with some pillows and put her head on the pillow and then I covered it up with the white blanket. Did she say or do anything towards you at this time? Well, she threw a kiss to me, and I threw one back to her. Wilma, did you love Ms. Hill? Did I love her? Well, I was just there two months or three months, and it was just like home to me, so yes, I loved her. You saw Dr. and Ms. Hill together quite a bit, did you not? I saw them together, yes. Did Mrs. Joan Hill love Dr. Hill? Yes. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence that you are about to give in this cause now on trial is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall help you, God? I do. State your name for the court and jury, please. Anne Hurd. So would you keep your voice up, please, so the court and jury can hear you? Yes, sir. 
Do you know the defendant in this case, uh, Dr. John Hill? Yes, I do. Would you point him out, please? Right there. On the early morning of uh, June 30th, 1969, was the automobile in which you and John Hill were driving involved in a collision? Yes, it was. Your Honor, may we have the record reflect our position? You object to that? May we have a running objection, Your Honor? Your objection's overruled, Counselor. To which we take exception, Your Honor. Would you uh, describe just the event of the collision, please? Dr. Hill was driving the car. He veered into a bridge, crashed my side of the car into a bridge. And immediately following this, did he not once again threaten your life? Your Honor, there has been no testimony to that effect. We object to it. Sustained. Uh, immediately following that, uh, immediately following the collision, what happened? He pulled a syringe from his pocket and tried to turn and get it into me. Could you have gotten out of your side of the car at that moment? No, sir. My side was demolished. What did you do? I succeeded in, in jiggling it out of his hand and it fell to the floor. Does Dr. Hill have occasion to treat patients who are victims of accidents of one sort or another? Yes, of course. Did you know when he was approaching you with the uh, needle whether he was attempting to uh, treat you or harm you? Yes, I knew. By something that happened previously? Yes. What was that? He had just told me how he had killed Joan with a needle. I object, Your Honor. Your Honor, I object. Uh, may it please the court, I object to that. May we approach the bench? We will take the jury out. <laughs> Your Honor, we move for a mistrial. The lady has injected by her comments before the jury testimony to the effect that the defendant admitted that he killed his wife with a needle. Uh, does this mistrial mean the end of your prosecution, Dr. Not Hill? Not at all. We'll move immediately for a new trial. Dr. Hill, is this a woman scorned talking? I think that's evidence everyone listening. It's worse than that. It's evidence of a woman scorned and a woman devoid of reason. Maniacal in her effort and desire to exact some revenge on John Hill for some imagined wrong. I appreciate your calling. I wanted to see you before we move away. You're really going? I know how you feel. Rhea and me, we're getting sick of falling over reporters, process servers. We're thinking of going to Florida for a while, at least until the new trial comes up. The mistrial. I know it was a disappointment for you. You did what you had to, but next time it'll be different. You know, sometimes I get to thinking what they all say about me is true. Maybe I turned crazy from all the hate I feel. But now I know the bastard not only killed my Joan, he bragged on it to you. Goodbye, Ash. Take care of yourself. You hear? I had special locks put on. I want to feel safe, serene. Mom, I think this is your record. Wonderful music. I understand the new Mrs. Hill prefers classical. Don't look back, your mom always said. Good advice is always so simple and so hard to follow. Be 
glad to see us. seem to think that robbery was the motive for Dr. This Dickson. was a professional killing. Uh, we understand that Dr. Hill's face was badly mauled either before or after the shooting. If I went down the street now and shot Ash Robbins, shot him ten times, and then burned his house down, it wouldn't do any good. It wouldn't breathe life into my son. In addition to battering Dr. Hill's face till it was almost unrecognizable, the gunman then took the time to cover the dead man's face completely with adhesive tape. Why? peace anywhere please just a few questions I uh, I've been trailing you for three days find something better to do give me a break three questions uh, in order to have dr. Hill murdered did you promise to pay any of the three persons the police have arrested no I wanted John Hill shot I wouldn't have waited all these years I certainly wouldn't have had him killed just six weeks before his trial was coming up then why have the defendants named you if you didn't pay them? Because they believe what they read in the paper about my feelings toward the doctor. They won't put it off on somebody, so they put it off on me. Well, why did they shoot Dr. Hill? Robbery. John was supposed to be carrying as much as $15,000 in cash to pay his lawyer. Uh, there's a rumor... You've got your three questions. Please, one more. Uh, some people wonder if John Hill is still alive. Uh, could it have been a lookalike who was shot? 
Why was his face so battered and then taped? Dr. Hill would have known you'd be blamed. Son, I've given you all the answers I have. Now leave me be. lives just there. How lucky. See, in one minute he is here. Something about him. Mary, what is it? Well, for a second when he looked at me, I... I couldn't be. You're so maddening. John Hill's dead. Legally dead. Come on, let's get out of here. 